Hey, Turbs. <laughs> you doing, BB? You don't feel like swimming? That's surprising. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great with uh, working on this vlog, getting started with laying out supplies and everything I want to do. It's just, it's just too hot. I'm not minding the heat. I think it feels nice. It's like 97 and very dry. Not used to. It's much more pleasant when it's dry. I mean, it's still, it should be a little bit cooler, but I'll take it. I wanted to work on fertilizing and this just, this isn't the weather for it. I don't think it's a good idea. Generally when things are over like I'd say around 94, that's when I like to back off from using the fertilizers because at that point when it's that hot outside, the plants are really just in survival mode. They just want to get hydrated. If the soil isn't nice and moist, then there can be some root damage. I mean, there shouldn't be if it's the proper fertilizer, then that shouldn't be an issue, but it's just a risk. So I'm not going to do that. That's not looking like it's going to cool off anytime soon. But I did remember how last week's vlog was actually from two weeks prior. So what you're seeing now is three weeks later from last week. Does that mean that I managed to make it really complicated? All right, well, long story short, stored. <laughs> Long story short, not that short, like a minute, minute and a half into the video, I have a few little things that I can do. They're purring on the bananas that's necessary in order to be able to get the fertilizer down in there, get some air moving around. We'll talk about that, but they're really just some updates that we need to give because like I said, the decent amount of stuff has changed out here since last time we were all out here together. Like for example, look, that, okay, I know it's not mind blowing, but the big blue pot that I was working on getting glued back together gone. I fixed it. It's it's together. And so this space is open back up now. Looking nice. So we can go have a look at that pot so you know what I'm talking about. This one right here. Great big, I think it's a 28 inch ceramic planter. I've had this thing for what feels like forever since I was a little kid. And it broke many years ago. Just now got it put back together. It isn't perfect. Some of the pieces I think changed size. They wouldn't go back together. I had to take a file and work on some of them to get them back in there. Like you can see how this crack is very exposed there. So I had to Gorilla Glue it. It's very simple to do. Gluing pots together, normally very easy. This one took several days to, I don't know, I think it was actually like a week and a half because you have to allow time for the glue to cure. If you have a lot of pieces, and you have to be somewhat methodical about it. You have to be able to remember if there's a certain piece that goes in between another piece and you have to like work your way from biggest to smallest. Oh, and it broke while I was gluing it together. I think this container's just had it, but I was already a good halfway through gluing it back together, so I just went with it and I figured, okay, well, gone this far, get it fixed up. If it breaks again, fine. I tried, but at least finish what has been started here. So what I had to do was glue it together just the normal way. It's Gorilla Glue. You just get it, every piece nice and wet, and then you put a heavy layer of glue down, hold them together for 24 hours. That's why there's a bungee cord wrapped around the side here for pressure to help hold it together. And then uh, when I have big gaps, like you can see right here, like that's bad, we don't, we don't want that. But it's just the way the pieces were fitting together. It wasn't really anything I could do about it. So uh, I went back in and then filled in 24 hours later on top of the glue I'd already put in there to fill in the gaps. I moved all the way across the patio. It actually feels pretty sturdy. There is a piece missing. I don't know where it is, but also I don't care. It's a hole in the bottom of the pot. I can spend a lot of time trying to find a piece from something from five or six years ago when it's a piece that has a hole in it when I already, there's already a hole. I don't think that that would have been necessary. So the plan here with this pot is to get it moved back into here. Basically, I just want to get this set someplace where I'm never going to touch it again, because clearly it's fragile. And that spot will likely be somewhere over here at Sun Patients. Look how thirsty they are. I've watered these twice today. Look at them. The drip's about to go off. There's a drip hit over there that will hit them. That should help. There's a good amount of shade over here and still look at them. Partially because they need to get planted up. Those may end up just going in these blue Miami containers here. I wanted to do something like spectacular and beautiful with these containers, but I just really wasn't impressed with what I was seeing at most of the nurseries, at least not within a way where it would have been affordable to do two of certain things. And I had an original plan. We can talk about that. This is gonna be fun. We're just gonna walk around and talk for a while. The Stuttgart Cannas, which are just lit wonderfully right now. I got these with the intention of putting one in each one of those containers because they're just gorgeous plants. Hopefully you can tell. I can't see my screen. Problem is 
only one of the clumps came up. Planted three, got one. So that's not going to work for having one inside of each of those containers, but I figured that that would have been a great spot for those because it's a spot that gets well, pretty bright morning light and then filtered light in the afternoon, especially on the right side of the steps and the left side doesn't get much light at all because the, this thing's grown an awful lot over here. Does a good job shading things, but having the two variegated cannas in there with some ginger and some creeping jenny, just foliage and color, and it just, it didn't work out. So I might just drop those in those containers. I think that'd be fine. Hey, Turbs. Hey, bud, how you doing? Want to say hi? Nice to see you. Look at those. Aren't those neat? Those fun inflorescents that have... I think those are actually probably just about seeds at this point. I would imagine almost there from the Monstera. It's been fun watching those develop. You're just gonna keep pacing back and forth. That makes me feel bad. Why are you doing that? I'll get it. Okay, that didn't make any sense. Why'd you do that? Okay, so that's what happened with that pot down there. The bananas, I'd mentioned that I need to prune them. I like to give them a midsummer prune where I just go in and remove most of the lower foliage in them. It makes it so more air can flow around on the inside and it's easier to water them and fertilize them. This clump over here though, I'm not certain what I'm going to do because the, I'd mentioned, I think a few times I'd mentioned, there are a lot of wasps over here, like just tons of them. They have a nest somewhere over here and I really don't want to go diving into all that. Which is a problem because I also need to set up a sprinkler over here too. As you can, I mean, you can tell, right? Thirsty plants. So with the sprinkler, I'll probably end up running it to the perimeter where I don't have to get in there just to be safe. And the, uh, I just, I don't know, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with that spot. I think it'd be pretty dumb to start crawling around in there and prune those bananas when like right now I see like six or seven wasps flying around there. Probably not a good idea. Let's clump over here though. Not seeing the wasps, they seem okay. This is the main thing I wanted to show. Look at the, this crinum. Isn't that just spectacular? Spectacular. This is the Crinum Persephone. Yes, Persephone. That's what it was. Really nice big clump. I, pardon the trash can. That's where I put the stuff from the pool skimmers, but I figured, hey, give some scale. Having that right next to it. I can move that out of the way. This clump is easily at this point, I would say five by four. These lilies have grown a ton. I was going to divide them up in the springtime, and I'm glad I didn't because they're putting on an absolute show. There's two flower stalks right here. Got some flowers right there, some more over here, and then there's another one getting ready to open up right there. Now, the critum lilies, they can take a while, depending on which type you're growing, they can take a while to get established. And uh, this has been in the ground for a good, I'd say maybe six or seven years, something along those lines. Beautiful plant, really nice, deep, glossy foliage. If you're in zone 7B and up, I think that this would be evergreen to semi-evergreen. For me, it dies down to the ground in the winter time. I'm in 6A, 6B. This is a really nice, sturdy, tough crinum lily. They can take a good amount of cold. I'm hopeful that with the clump being the size that there may still be a few more flower stalks that come up there. This is one where we don't get to see the flowers on the channel very often because they tend to come up as the plant's been younger, it would shoot up a stalk and back away. Apparently there are some wasps over here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We'll talk about it over here. I pissed some bugs off. I mean, you got to see it. You know what I'm talking about, that <laughs> Persephone. The uh, younger they are, the uh, shorter the lifespan seems to be on those bloom stalks. Really, it's just because they come out smaller, they don't have as many flowers, there's not as much power behind them. So usually they pop up and get some flowers. It's nice to see it big and established and mature like that. All right, so that's all been fun and updated. See the sunflower? Finally have a sunflower over there. I'm trying to figure out what to do here though, because I really need to get in and prune those bananas. The ones on the other end, I'm not as concerned about. But these, like they're the big ones and I just, I enjoy them looking nice. Uh, either way, I probably shouldn't touch them. I'm gonna run the hose on them for a while, give them a drink and maybe the wasps will go away and I can just be stealthy, get in and out and try and clean out some of that lower foliage, maybe, hopefully. I don't even know if I'm allergic. I got stung a bunch when I was a kid by bees and wasps and, you know, go out playing baseball, get stung, run around outside, get stung. Like, wasn't ever a big deal, but I'm an adult now and I know a lot of people who weren't allergic when they were kids and then found it. It's fine. I haven't done anything about the wasps because the wasps have done a really good job at getting the carpenter bees out of here. The carpenter bees, they look like bumblebees, but their butts all black and uh, they eat holes in the side of your house. And since the wasps have been here, I've only seen like one carpenter bee, so I'm just, I'm gonna let them do their thing for a while. It's been a few weeks. They're not hurting anything. They're mostly staying away from me and the dogs as long as I don't go in there and 
mess with them, then that's, it's been okay. Okay, I'm gonna wire the bananas and see if those will perk up, which they probably won't until the sun gets off of them. I don't know. Something else is gonna happen here. I don't know what. Turbo, I think it's actually time for you to go inside. Turn this off, which it looks like it was doing on its own. That's surprising. Oh, it's because the sprinklers were turning on. That's why I had a 15 minute timer set. Let's play in a moment. Come on, Turbo, come on. You gotta go inside, it's too hot out here for you. Sorry, baby, there you go. All of the drip that runs on this side of the patio from here and all the way down through this wall was set to come on in 15 minutes. I can't run the hose and have that running at the same time because there's not enough water pressure and then things don't get watered properly. End of that exciting story. Really? At least it's not humid. I'll give it that. I wonder what the humidity actually is. It says it's 100 and it feels like 100. That means dew point is low. Holy crap, 25%. In the desert over here. I have no idea what the humidity is in the desert. Probably lower than 25%, I would imagine. So the camera has, you wouldn't notice. I usually edit out the camera. Overheats like crazy when it's over 90 degrees without the humidity. That hasn't been a problem. However, I cannot keep these dang plants hydrated with this dry air. You know, most stuff I grow are things that like humidity. So I went through all of my drip timers and I bumped up how long they're running. They were at 10 minutes, like a week and a half ago, I bumped them up to 15 minutes. Today I bumped them up to 25 minutes. So all my drip is running for 25 minutes, four times a day. That's a lot, but at least it's more efficient. There aren't water shortages. Here, everything comes from the river, so that's good. Don't have to feel wasteful in that manner. I just reset that to do 25 minutes, not too long ago, so I probably won't see results from that until tomorrow, but at least it's a step in the right direction. I'm gonna have to let those bananas kind of plump back up for a while. I thought it was cooling off. I was sitting over there at the table with sprinklers running. Right? It's like, oh, it feels nice. No, I was very wrong about that. And then I got disappointed. I was looking at next week's forecast. And my jaw dropped. I was like, what is this? All 70s and 60s, and then I remember that my friend had been using my app yesterday. I need to update, change the location. This is in San Clemente. I think he was actually trying to find the weather for Dana Point, whatever, potato, potato. They're right next to each other-ish. So that was a let down. Actually, I probably would have been kind of chilly if it were that cool, because I've gotten used to it being warmer outside. This area over here, I need to do some cleaning up. I can do that. A bunch of spent gingers in here that can come out that have been welting down, looking sad. Don't know why it took me a moment to correct that one. Lots of new growth coming up from the inside, even a new flower popping up, so that's good. This flower head on uh, the Green Mountain Ginger. Do you want to focus? Did you come here to work today? No camera? I and mean, hey, at least it's not overheating. The bar is low right now. This one is the ginger that had those little orange flowers in it, which, well, you can't even see it, so it doesn't matter right now. I had mentioned in the last video how great it is with this ginger because the flowers last such an incredibly long time and then it got really hot outside and it cooked. But that's okay because it's an old growth. It came with that growth and it's filling out just beautifully from the inside. It already has some more inflorescence that are getting ready to pop open. Well, does it have some or just one? All right, I guess it's just the one. That's okay, I'll take it. Still happy with that. And then the banana, look at that. Tons of growth in this one. Want to come in there and get that cleaned out because some of that older foliage that was in there wasn't looking too hot to begin with. I think it'd be better to get that out, and get things opened up some. Look at because it, it goes all the way up there. So really, these right here, those can go. Then the few that are behind there and have an open canopy and. It's more light can get down inside to these gingers right here. There is something that is so satisfying about pruning banana trees. Like I love getting in here and cutting these things. I think it's because pruning like on its own is just a fun thing to do. I enjoy it. It's something you only get to do when the plants are growing or when you're trying to improve their appearance. It's something that either shows the plants doing really well or that you're doing something to push it forward to doing really, really well. And with bananas, that's that slice, that crunch you get love it and with bananas you don't have to feel bad about going in and pruning them sometimes can be a bit shocking when you remove a lot of the foliage but you know within a week maybe two weeks they're going to be flushed back out and looking fantastic again so it doesn't even really matter that looks much 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 better i need to prune this rose too but 
I don't have my gloves out here with me and I don't feel like it. Add that to the list of things that I'll probably never do this season. And then the fall when we do a garden tour, I'll go, I was supposed to do that back in like July. And then never did. It doesn't really need it. I just think it would look better if it had a big cutback. I guess it does kind of need it. It has a lot of damage on it. And only one tiny little pathetic flower. Well, I may not have my gloves, but I got a bunch of banana leaves. I can come in here, prune it out. You know, and actually these aren't all that spiky. This is one of the smaller type roses. Go all the way around, give this really nice cut. I don't prune the landscape roses at all like I would like a hybrid tea where you need to pay attention to where you're making those cuts. All right, ow, shit. I just try to make sure that they're cut uniformly all the way around and that things aren't too congested on the insides. So they don't have to worry about rotten. Any like weird leads or any weird branches like this one you can see comes all the way from in there. I'm gonna cut that out. It was nice, had flowers on it. It was a wonky branch. It was never going to grow properly and look uniform with the rest of everything, kind of like this one. Just unfortunately like the nicest looking one on here, but it's gotta go because the rest of the plant's not going to grow straight up like that one. Come in, get the tips, get these little bits out, get it nice and shaped up. Try and remove the old flower heads, even though you shouldn't have to do that with this particular rose. Uh, I think it needs it. Okay, it's not like a mind blowing change, but I do think that this will fill back out more nicely and just overall look better. Now I gotta do something with all these without getting a handful of thorns. What am I hearing? It doesn't sound normal. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's not supposed to be happening. Is it showing up on camera? Oh gosh, I can hear the wasps buzzing around my ears. I don't know what to do about that, but it may explain the water pressure issues I've been having with the drip over here. So it's good to no, I'm, ugh, I'll go find a goof plug. I already have all my drip stuff sitting out here because I've been working on it, so that's not... Well, I don't know why I'm filming this. Y'all can't come with me over there. This camera will get all wet. Oh, it's because I was going to show you the goof plugs. These things right here. Barbed end plug. That's what goes inside those holes that you don't want inside your drip lines. <sighs> Always something. Good thing I went down there to get the lid to that waste bin. Otherwise, I don't know if I would have noticed that. That line that you saw that was spraying water everywhere is one that... I unearthed earlier today that I realized had been buried underneath some mulch when I overwintered the gingers. There's a lot more that I need to unearth that's been buried, but it's back there with all the wasps. And like I said, I'm not going to do anything about those wasps. Probably not for a couple more weeks. Anyways, eventually I'm going to need to do something because they eventually there will be too many and will be dangerous. But for now, they can do their thing and I'll just leave them alone. Trying not to jinx it and say that they're friendly wasps. Though maybe I just did. I probably shouldn't have said that, should I? Oh, this one's still kind of nice. No, throw it away. I was thinking I could take it inside, put it in a vase, but that's dumb and unnecessary. So when this zone, the next one, zone four is running, that was zone three that was spraying. So in 10 minutes, I need to come in here and run zone three again to see what it was attached to and see where the problem was. Like right here, what's going on? It's the heat. That's the problem. Making those tubes way too soft. I think the rest of the drips are running well over there. I have this emitter right here that I'm going to take and stick up here because some of the plants up here are kind of dry. They could use some more water. That leaf is in the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. There we go. That should be good. I'm wondering, I'm pretty sure zone three must also go to these containers over here because I've been having a heck of a time keeping those watered in zone four is running right now and there's nothing coming out. I guess we'll find out in 10 minutes. Now, I forgot that that was running on manual mode. So you can hit this button right here. It says manual and select the station. So it was running through manual and now it's turned over to running. It's supposed to be running right now. Now it's on zone one. So it's going to be like 45 minutes. It, this isn't this isn't a big deal. This isn't something we need to talk about. My curiosity, ooh, that's a great shot. My curiosity is just if that's going to help with the pressure over here in these containers because the water pressure that's been coming out from that drip has just been pathetic. And I would think that that's what that goes to. At one point I did have all of these labeled, but the sun faded them down. So I don't remember. I know zone one goes to everything over here. This garden bed and the palm tree right there. Zone two has at least one emitter right there. No, two emitters right there. Zone three goes to the, no, zone four goes to the driveway and the Alexander Palm. So I'm pretty sure zone three is this banana clump, which is looking pretty thirsty. So that would explain why they're looking thirsty. 
and then this hydrangea planter, which by the way, I mean, can we just have a moment to look at this? This is another thing that I wanted to update on. It's been, like I said, three weeks since these were in a video. Absolutely stunning. And these are just getting started. Look how big they are. These will easily double in size by the time I'd say September gets here and they'll start to get pink down below and be white up top. Also, just remember there's a bird's nest in there so you need to back away. The sunflower growing in here, just, it was in there and I decided to just let it do its thing. I can't grow sunflowers from seeds. I don't know why, every time I try they just rot and die, but if I let nature do it, no problem. I'm being a little bit hard on myself. I haven't tried to grow sunflower from seeds that many times, but every time I try they get eaten, so I put cages over them this year and they just never sprouted. Put two dozen short stuff sunflowers in the garden. And I don't remember if I talked about this or not. Maybe I did. I'll be quick with it. They're a type that only gets a couple feet tall, but they still have a really big, huge sunflower flower on them. And I put two dozen in different spots in the garden. So it's like to eliminate variables and just see what would happen there. Okay. Wasps start to fly up into a very dangerous area. Nothing. They didn't even germinate. That's probably just a issue of the packet being a dud because that doesn't normally happen. Sunflowers are usually pretty easy to get started. There's a better shot of that Stuttgart. Stuttgart. Canna. Wouldn't those have been beautiful in that container down there? But you know, I'll have these next year and they'll be even bigger and even more full and I can probably chop them and divide them. Not that big of a deal, just I think that that would have been nice. You can see what the heat's done. Dry air is making everything so wilty and floppy out here. By the way, any of you in Southern California, is that forecast like Orange County area, Newport, Dana Point, San Clemente, was that normal? Is it normally like that in July? Because if so, I think it's time to move. Oh, spectacular. I'm having weather envy right now. And then there were two other things I wanted to talk about because there were things people have asked me about and I haven't really addressed in videos. That's going to bother me. may not be able to get in there and prune the bananas, but this should be just fine. These aren't showing any signs of being dehydrated. And once the fronds all yellow like that, there's no reason to keep it. All the nutrients are gone. That looks much better. The bananas. I don't know. I think I should wait. I want to go in there and prune them, but I think I should wait. The uh, whole situation here. I have some repots I want to do and the fertilizing and everything. I already explained about the fertilizing. When it's dry, the plants, the moisture evaporates more quickly. I feel like that's probably something everybody understands. So when it's dry and then 100 degrees, not the best time to be repotting things that are used to it being humid. Perhaps in climates where that's normal. Maybe it's not a big deal. I don't know. I know Garden Answer. Laura, she does stuff all summer long and it's like this and maybe even drier outside. But I, my, my plants aren't used to it. It's just, I don't know. It's not a risk that I want to take. I've done plenty of gardening out here when it's been in the hundreds before, but it's also been humid. So the water loss isn't something I get as concerned about. That's why that's none of that stuff is happening. The drip. Somebody asked me how long or how do I know how long to run drip for? Well, clearly, after everything I said in this video, I don't. Now, that's not really the case. What I try and do with my drip is I, when I first get them set up, I'll go to the timer and set it to run for like 20 or 30 minutes. And wherever my biggest container is, I just stand back and wait. And once I start to see water coming out the bottom of the pot, I see how long it's been. And that's how long they need to run. Running the drip in a container is not the same as running them in the ground. The ground's going to hold on to moisture for a longer amount of time. That was supposed to be when I segued to talking about this over here, but I messed up the order. That's fine. I generally don't like to have my drip that's running into containers running off the same zone in a timer that's in a garden bed because what this container is going to need might be way too much water for the garden bed. If this garden bed right here weren't one that was on a slope with really, really, really heavy drainage. And it's just, it's an oven over there. The pavement and the side of the house, the pool and reflections, it gets really hot over there. If that were a more shady area, then it could be a big problem for those plants having to get the same amount of water as this pot. Does that, that make sense? It's pretty simple. Just let the thing run, time it when water comes out the bottom, then it's been running long enough. Sometimes I'll add like an extra couple minutes just to be safe because everything's so dry. The water's moving through very, very quickly and that's why I had them set down lower than they needed to be. I just wasn't taking into account that the soil does actually need to become fully moistened all the way around, not just at the root. So in order for things to stay cool when it's not humid outside. Okay, and then the shower. There were a few questions from the shower video. I'm so done talking about the shower. I, it's my fault. I forgot to mention, it cannot stay out during the winter time, has to go inside. It's just two pieces that just twist off of each other and one hose you take off. So it's very easy to take inside. 
and it did have a cover that it, the direction said to keep over it. I'm not going to do that. This thing's like seven and a half feet tall. I know myself well enough. I'm not going to do it. It's back here. It's somewhat protected. It's probably fine. The directions were a little bit wonky with that. It made it seem like the cover was for people who are keeping it outside during the winter time. I'm not really sure. Okay, I think we're caught up now. Doesn't it look so much better over here? Having that big blue pot out of the way and all the stuff's cleaned up, the alyssum starting to grow and do some things, not getting as much growth out of the impatience as I had hoped, but I don't think they were getting enough water. So that should help having the timers turn back up like I do right now. Oh, and I repotted all the, not repotted, I restarted all my artichoke seedlings that I started in the winter time. I planted a bunch of them out and they got eaten, which the whole reason I planted them or chose to plant them in my front yard is because they aren't supposed to be something that the deer and rabbit eat, but turns out they did. And then looking back on it, I'm not really sure why I started more seeds. I had a lot of seeds, so I guess that's why I did that, but I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. <laughs> I don't have any place to put them in the backyard and the front yard, they'll get eaten. With the plants, sometimes just get excited and I do things. And the other mule palm right here, that got repotted. Look how big this one is. This one's much bigger than the other one. Not a ton, but it's more girthy than the other one. UBB, <laughs> look at you, Turbo. Such a good boy. Had a little swim while we were waiting. It's not really a little swim, it's about a mile. Not too bad, not him. He didn't swim a mile. He just hung out and threw toys at me and jumped in the water, which is fun. Having all the waves in the water while you're trying not to inhale and swallow all that stuff in your face. Thanks for that, Turbo. I think the bananas have fluffed up enough. They could fill out some more, but this is gonna have to do. Excuse me, excuse me, Turbo. Towel off. I also had noticed that the wasps not as active right now, so may as well get in there and get this cleaned up. Or actually, this isn't, it's not gonna be that exciting. I'll just come back, see how they look when I'm done. There we go, that's better. There's still one right there, right above my finger that goes from that trunk and through. That wanted to come out, there's actually several more that I wanted to come out, but that one, it's still bugging me. The, there were, turns out, lots of wasps in there. They were hanging out inside the banana leaves. This is, is that a thing? I've been growing bananas since I was like, I don't know, 12 years old. I never noticed them attracting wasps, but the summer. Lots of wasps inside the bananas and the banana cannas. Those will be flushed back out here in like a week. Won't even be able to notice that they were pruned. The main reasons, like I said, was to open things up. I'm gonna see if I can get closer. They're opened up so I'll be able to get fertilizer into them more easily with lots of lower foliage. It's harder to get the spray, the liquid fertilizer down into them and even to get in with any type of compost to amend them. And the other thing is they won't be smacking me in the face <laughs> when I'm walking through there. They're at an obnoxious height. And that's not fun when there's wasps hanging out inside of them either. Also, I realize that if the wasps are chasing off or probably actually killing the carpenter bees, probably the same thing happening with the honeybees, right? I'm gonna look it up. I have a guy who really, this shouldn't even be happening, who's supposed to take care of those things, a company that comes out and manages that stuff. So I'll give them a call because this is too much. When it was just a few, it was fine, but there's, there are a lot of them. They're getting in my way and I don't want them stinging my dog. Or me, I don't want to get stung either. Doesn't that look better? From over here, you can see more of what I was talking about. All the stuff that's on the inside, that's where a lot of them were hanging out. They seem to have moved on. Where are they? I don't trust it. Where'd they go? Must have retreated for the night, go figure. Now that I just sent, nope, there they are. Just saw like three of them. Anyways, that's done. Looks better, still need to get in there and do that part, open things up so there's more light coming through here for the crinum lily and just more access to be able to give them the nutrients. Bananas are very, very, very heavy feeders. And I just think it looks a lot nicer too. I don't like when there's a ton of old foliage going all the way down to the ground. He still had their little nubs on them when they first started popping up in the springtime. You know, those tiny little leaves that come out from down below, had them all over the pseudo stems. Glad to have those off of there. This, I'm gonna wait for the people to come out handle the wasps and then I'll get in there and take care of all that mess. And a couple of hours have passed since the video started with the drip running for that extra, I think it's 10 minutes now, so they're up to 25 minutes. Huge difference, plants are looking a lot better. That's also the time of day the sun's off of them, so I really have to wait till tomorrow to really see what kind of a difference that made, but I would imagine it's not going to hurt. I noticed that the reason I brought up the water moving through the pots is one, because I had been asked and because I had noticed that I wasn't seeing any trails of water coming out of the bottoms of the pots, and that's why I knew that I needed to get those 
running longer. Isn't that sort of backwards? Wouldn't you think that when it's more humid out and the soil's holding more moisture that it would take longer for the water to move through? I guess it, it wasn't as hot when it was humid. Seven, right? no, brain's done. That's enough. Thanks for hanging out. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. Oh, next week's Saturday video is either going to be kind of weird or just not exist at all. I'll probably have something come out. They got, oh, there's a bunch of stuff going on next week and I'll either be able to film it or I won't. I don't know yet. Hopefully I'll at least be able to film some of it. I completely forgot at one point I've been talking about getting this mule palm repotted and then I just, I moved right on to something else. Well, that was pretty much the end of the story. The other mule palm has been repotted. The big one. I mean, they're about the same size, but this one has just a nicer shape to it. It always has. I don't know why this one is always, I thought just looked better than the one that's you can't even see because the bamboo is hiding it. But the one that I repotted in the video, probably should have repotted the one in the video that looks nicer. But then there's not going to be as much of a drastic change when I give an update to see like how well the palm tree responded to the... Yeah, that's right. There is always a method behind the madness. Just sometimes I forget what that method is. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.